Jason Peters to the Dallas Cowboys just makes too much sense. The Hall of Fame left tackle still has a lot left to offer, especially at tackle. Remember, this guy's not playing wide receiver or free safety where he has to run a lot. He really just needs to be able to move two to three yards in either direction for the most part. And I oftentimes say this, technique is the most important thing no matter what. And Peters is probably one of the most technical tackles I've ever watched. Let's get right into his tape. Jason Peters is a veteran. And one of the things you have to understand with veterans is they understand things such as blocking angles. That's exactly what he does on this play. And he wins the rep and opens up a massive lane. Peters and the tight end on this play have this fold concept where they're trapping Aaron Donald. And this play pops for a massive gain. But this play doesn't work without Peters as well as the tight end. Being a veteran, Peters understands if he's able to just seal off this defensive end, and of course all these guys are kind of blocking down and 81's going to trap Donald, the lane will pop and it will open right on the inside hip of Peters. Now think about it from Jason Peters' perspective. He's one of those tackles that understands all he has to do is turn his butt towards the running back, seal off, and just don't make any mistakes. Make sure the guy gets pushed outwards and make sure he doesn't beat you to the inside. That's exactly what Peters does. He seals this defensive end off. And David Montgomery picks up a big chunk of yards on this play. That's because of Jason Peters. Let's get into the next rep. In my opinion, the most important concept for a tackle is to anchor. To be able to get vertical in your set, not give up too much ground, and be able to shut down a, a defensive end. As I'm watching Jason Peters' reps, I see that he does a good job anchoring down. He does a good job in his pass sets. He's not losing on any of these reps. As I watched every single one of his snaps against the Rams in week one, he did a really solid job on pretty much every single rep. Now, to be fair, he did technically give up one sack. And I want to break that sack down, but I also want to get into his other sacks that he gave up because I know that is one of the things that's been kind of trendy with Peters. In 2021, Jason Peters did give up six sacks, or at least according to Pro Football Focus, he gave up six sacks. I want to actually just go over all six of those sacks really quickly. And then we're going to get into some of his technique and pass sets against some other teams because this guy looks very impressive on tape. Now, one of the things with Peters you have to understand is he's going to try to help out every single person that he can help out. On this play, the left guard is in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Aaron Donald, and he beats the left guard right at the point of attack. And you can tell, by the way, Peters sets that as he's getting vertical, he realizes this. And he turns his focus to Donald to help his left guard out. Now, at the same time, as he's trying to help his guard out, his guy is speed rushing off the edge and he kind of hesitates between those two things and his guy ends up with the sack. Now I would 100% credit this sack to Jason Peters, but I think context is key on this first sack. Now that you guys saw it and kind of understand why he gave up the sack, let's get into the second sack because this one's a little bit different. Because on this next sack, Peters is going one-on-one -on -one with Miles Garrett, one of the best defensive ends in the entire league see there's a difference when you give up a sack to a pass rusher that's not known versus the best pass rusher in the nfl in this case miles garrett does a great job swatting down peter's hand and getting to the quarterback now technically this is a split sack but you can almost make the argument that there's a point in this play where justin field should have stepped up i would put this sack on the quarterback more so than i would on the tackle see an experienced quarterback like dak prescott may step up into the pocket here because there is a clean pocket so sack number two, I would probably say is not on Jason Peters. Now in this next play, this is once again, Peters going up against an experienced pass rusher that is Yannick Ngakwe. And Yannick Ngakwe is going to give Jason Peters a cross chop and get to the quarterback. And you can almost make the argument that there is a clean pocket and Fields should have stepped up. No pass rusher should be sacking a quarterback seven to eight yards into the backfield. At some point, an experienced quarterback would step up. And I think Fields with that inexperience did not step up. And you can almost make the argument that the third sack probably doesn't go to Peters either. Now on this fourth sack, I would say is on Peters, but you can also make the argument that the defensive line runs a game and the left guard does not pick up the guy that's over Peters. The left guard should have switched with Peters. He doesn't, the guy gets to the inside and he ends up getting the sack. Now in the fifth sack, Peters does lose. And I would put this 100% on Peters, no excuses. He gets bull rush, he gives up too much ground and his guy ends up getting the sack. And finally, the last sack that Peters apparently gave up according to PFF. The quarterback is trying to climb the pocket, trying to step up, and Peters guy basically tackles the quarterback. Do keep in mind, 
this is a loss of one yard so had the quarterback fallen forward just one extra yard it wouldn't have counted as a sack so again this is why we watch the tape right jason peters obviously is a solid player and you don't necessarily credit all six sacks to him without the context being there now peters did dominate last year Let's get into what makes him such a dominant player, specifically from the technique perspective. Uh, one of the things you guys have to keep in mind when you watch a guy like Peters, who's up there in age, is you have to watch the most recent tape that you have, right? Which, of course, was the 2021 tape. But you have to watch different weeks as well, right? Keep in mind, the first game we just watched was the first week of the season. This is week six, right? He's obviously used to the game speed. He's getting back into hitting. And the guy's dominant man like it's just clear to me that this is such a great fit for the cowboys and this is what you should expect out of a guy like peters by no means is this reach block difficult but do understand a lot of people aren't able to properly reach peter shows he can still reach he can still get out here and he can still seal off this five tech defensive tackle this is a really solid job by peters to be able to get out there and really just create that lane for this running back I mean, look at that lane right here that's created. That should have been a touchdown, in my opinion, a more explosive back like Zeke or Pollard. Hit this and score. Now, of course, in the NFL, lanes generally don't last as much, but Peters does a really solid job opening up a lane. Now, I want to spend some time on this play right here because I think this kind of shows you the mindset that Peters has, but it's a mindset that a lot of tackles don't have, right? If you guys watch Peters set here, notice how the defensive lineman was to the inside, but Peters is going to quickly shift and close that off and basically make sure the defensive lineman ends up to the outside he's going to quickly jump to the inside get his body inside and make sure that defensive tackle cannot beat him to the inside now this is important because you want to create a pocket all right this is what it should look like for your quarterback and if you let one of these defensive guys slip one of these gaps it's not going to be as clean and again peters is a veteran so he understands this small little detail this small little concept the quickest way to a quarterback is always through the inside and Peters does a great job pushing this defensive tackle to the outside and making sure his butt gets to the inside. It's a really solid rep by Peters, the veteran. Let's get into another rep because I think this next one's very interesting. Now on this play, you're going to have three guys basically come and the offensive line has to process and pick up all three of these guys. I'm going to let you guys watch the play and then we'll kind of break it down. But one of the things that's very important in my opinion for the Dallas Cowboys is to make sure that Tyler Smith gets all the help that he needs, right? One of the reasons why you draft Tyler Smith and put him at left guard next to Tyrone Smith is because you have a future left tackle helping out the rookie, the guy that is potentially the long-term option at left tackle, but not having Ty Tyrone Smith is going to hurt Tyler Smith. But by bringing in Jason Peters, you're basically giving him that same help. You're basically giving him that same confidence. Now think about what Peters does on this play to help out the left guard, Cody White. here. On this play, he's going to help double team the blitzing linebacker. He's going to make sure to pass off this guy. And he's going to make sure the guard has him controlled. And then from there, he's going to switch out back to the defensive end. And he's going to shut down an anchor and stop that defensive end as well. Not only is he helping the left guard, but think about the confidence that Cody White here has, knowing that he has a Hall of Fame in Jason Peters next to him. I think as Peters gets to the Cowboys and plays that left tackle spot with Tyler Smith to the inside, it's going to help that confidence. Because confidence is huge for offensive linemen, especially young offensive linemen. One of the things offensive linemen like to do, and this is really just guys that are maybe a little bit more advanced in terms of technique, is they like to use this uh, ghost move. Now, defense then and pass rushers do this as well. But if you watch Jason Peters, you may miss it. He's going to actually throw these. But what he does is he's going to throw these hands. And they're really not to actually make contact. They're really just to flash and fake it. Now, Zadarius Smith is a really good pass rusher, so Peters understands he has to do everything he can to beat this guy. So on this play, he's going to fake a punch. Zadarius Smith is going to react, and then Peters is going to just lock up with him and shut him down. It's a solid move by Peters. It's a veteran move, in my opinion, but it kind of shows the advanced moves that this guy has. One of the things that's absolutely pivotal for tackles and guards and centers is to mix up their pass sets. So what you're going to see in this play is Peters is not going to get vertical. He's not going to take the 45 degree set. He's going to jump set and go directly at this defensive end. So instead of Peters getting 45 or potentially getting vertical on this pass set, he's going to go directly towards this defensive end and he's going to make contact. Now this is important because as a defensive end, 
you may think that this guy's about to set up in a actual pass set. He may get vertical or whatever it may be. But instead, he's going to change it up, come directly at you. It's going to make you think a little bit more. It's going to make you want to process what's happening on the next rep or the rep after that. Is this guy going to come directly at me again? How do I set up my pass rush if I'm a defensive end? And this guy's mixing his stuff up. It makes it that much more difficult. And Jason Peters understands this small little concept. And again, he is advanced when it comes to pass blocking. And I want to show you guys his next rep because this one's kind of interesting. Now, when I watch Peters tape, one of the unique things is the different pass sets he does. Another thing he does in his pass set, and this one's kind of unique to Peters because not a lot of guys have done this. I have seen some veterans do these type of things. But in this play, you're going to see he starts off vertical and then he's going to change his pass set mid play and go directly at number 59. Now, this play doesn't work as well as it should have because 59 does technically get to the quarterback. Do keep in mind it's a quick throw. And Peters knew that. Peters knew this is a quick throw, so he knew he could change his pass set in this instance. Now, again, the fact that he gets vertical and then quickly goes back out towards number 59 is interesting. Because as a pass rusher, you think in your brain that this guy's getting vertical, so I'm going to set up some sort of speed rush. But then he changes his pass set mid play. It's definitely unique, definitely interesting. Let's get into the next rep. Now, some people talk about Peter's age and ask the question, is he still good enough to play? Is he still quick enough to pass that and get after linebackers and run plays? And I'll be the first to tell you, it absolutely is fair. But then when you put the tape on, you see things like this, where he's able to double and he kind of just tricks the linebacker and basically seals him off. I mean, think about this play right here. When an offensive lineman blocks down, generally as a linebacker, you come in and you fill that gap. Now, Peter's isn't technically blocking down. Peter fakes like he's going to block down and instead he's going to end up sealing to the inside of number 45. See, sometimes it's all about tricking the guy that you have to block. And in this case, he does just that, right? The fact that he fakes like he's down blocking and the 45 reads it correctly, he seals the gap. And then he quickly just turns to his left and he seals this guy off. I mean, I look at these plays and I say, this guy is unique because he's smart. He gets it. He knows how to do certain things, rather it's pass sets, rather it's getting vertical, rather it's anchoring, rather it's faking a set and going up towards a guy. Jason Peters is still a really solid football player. And I think for the Cowboys, this just makes too much sense. He's going to help Tyler Smith. The center to right tackle, I think, are pretty stout. I think this offensive line is going to be very good this year. I know some people are concerned with some of the issues, but I think the offensive line is going to be just fine. I know there's concern with the right tackle. I know there's some concern with the injury at left tackle. But overall, I think Jason Peters really helps this line. And I think Tyler Smith is a very interesting player. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is the first time you're on this channel, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.